Hey, Dave here, coming at you from my kitchen. Today I'm going to talk about molding ski boot liners. Before I go any further, I want to make a very strong recommendation that if you can get this safely done, buy a certified boot fitter at a retail shop. That is the way to go. Short of that, let's talk about some factors. There are some reasons that you would want to do this at home. We'll go through those. I don't feel like being stuck in place for 45 minutes on the floor of a retailer during a pandemic. Another reason, maybe you bought a pair of boots used and you don't have the resources to pay for a professional boot fitting at a ski shop. That's okay. I'll try to take you as far as I can today with the resources that are readily available. Maybe your priority is DIY. You've always wanted to demystify the process and try it for yourself. When you go to get a professional boot fitting done by a certified fitter, they are working with dozens of factors. I'm gonna take four of those and break them down so that you can decide if this is something that you wanna take on at home. The first factor is molding the liner, and this is the easiest part of the process, I think. This is a pair of boots that I had molded last winter and I didn't really like how it turned out, so I'm gonna remold this boot. The advantage that that gives me is I already know that this shell shape works with the shape of my foot. In the case of this boot, I molded this liner at home and I had a lot of success with it, but unfortunately, my foot shape doesn't match up that great with this shell shape. So I was getting some pressure. I marked those spots and I took it to a shop and had the shell punched out. This would be very difficult to do at home or in your workshop. A more complicated component of boot fitting is insoles. There is a massive amount of stress and force that is transferred through the ski, through the boot, to the bottom of your foot. It's very important to support the arch, cradle the heel, and immobilize the foot longitudinally. I happen to have a couple of insoles that Grizzly Outfitters and Big Sky made for me. They turned out really great. So for me, that takes a lot of risk out of fitting boots at home. You can still mold the boot with the stock insole that came with it. Just realize the trade-offs that you're not going to have the comfort and support that would come from something custom. I would recommend until you can get it done to at least buy something over the counter. For ski boots, I like the Carbon from Superfeet, but there are lots of great options out there and lots of resources on the internet to do research. That brings up our final and most complicated factor, is that when you go to a retail shop to try on boots, they're not going to fit your foot, and if anything, they should be slightly painful until they're molded. So you don't know if the boot is going to fit until it's been heat molded. A certified boot fitter can draw on their experience to assess your foot and find a boot shape from their selection that most closely matches your foot shape. So if you're buying a pair of boots online or a used pair of boots, you get what you get. You might not know if they're gonna fit or not until it's too late. So it's worth it to do a lot of research on brand websites, familiarize yourself with last with, and read a lot of user reviews. Let's go over some of the resources that you're gonna to need to fit at home. First, you're gonna need an oven. You'll also need some uninterrupted time and a lot of patience. You'll want some duct tape because why would you start any project without it? Toe caps are great because they're gonna create some space around your toes to spread out, be warm and be comfortable. I got these directly from Intuition. They're pretty affordable. If you don't have access to these, you can wrap your toes in duct tape to create a makeshift toe cap. You'll want a very thin pair of socks or stockings to hold the insole and the toe cap in place when you put your foot inside of the boot. The last thing is the socks that you ski in because you want that heat molding process to accommodate that volume. My video is more about the theory and the why of ski boot molding than the actual practice, although I am going to take you through the process. There are a bunch of videos online, some of them with really great production quality, that show you how to do this. Even if you finish watching this video, I recommend watching one or two more so that you can get a couple different perspectives and build your confidence. I took out racks to make space, 
And I put down a wooden cutting board because I don't want to put the liners directly onto the oven rack. I also removed the stock insoles from the liners. I don't want to bake those in there. If you have your own custom insoles, you want to leave those out. There's no reason to rebake those. They're already molded to your feet. So I'm turning the oven off. Still going to have plenty of heat. Load the liners into the oven. A lot of folks are going to tell you to do this one at a time. I like to do both of them at the same time so they have the same heat and the same consistency of the foam. So got that all loaded up and even though I want to cook these for 10 to 12 minutes, I'm going to set my timer for five minutes just in case. We want to make sure that you don't burn anything here. While those liners are cooking, I'm going to get my feet ready. Start with the insole like to take some duct tape and tape this thing in place so that when I shove my foot into the boot, it's not going to shift around as much. Then I will take a toe cap and again, take some duct tape, tape this thing into place so that it's not shifting around on me. So I'm taking that super thin sock and putting it over the insole and the toe cap just as a little extra insurance to make sure things don't slip around. Then I'm taking my regular ski sock. Mine's pretty thin but you might run a little colder and have narrower feet than mine. So if you've got that thick sock you want to make sure that it's on so that you're accounting for that volume in the molding process. These things are now good and hot. I'm going to check the temperature, make sure I'm not going to burn my foot. And you can do this by either inserting your foot into the liner and then into the boot, um, or the other way around. Give everything a good firm pull. You don't want any wrinkles in there. Buckle from top to bottom. Can't tell you why. Just what I was taught. Having the board helps because then you can really lean into the front of the boot. My last step is to place the liners in the refrigerator to cool that foam down and to set the fit. There you have it. We successfully fit some ski boots at home. It can be done. Let me know how your process goes and what kind of outcomes you get. Thanks for watching the video.